Good morning. This is uh, Monday of Holy Week. Uh, we otherwise call it Holy Monday. Why Holy Week? That's the name given to this week that is the most important week of the Christian year. It is the week that stretches between the jubilation of Palm Sunday as Jesus enters Jerusalem in pomp and in ceremony. And then this week carries us through to a week where Jesus has the last meal with his disciples and then is crucified. At the end of the week, or actually beginning of the next week then, a week from Palm Sunday, we celebrate Easter Sunday and the resurrection, the cause for our true jubilation, for our hope, and for our trust in the Lord. And so I thought that this year, because we're all of these celebrations are so marred, so marked by the fact that we are living in a world where pandemic is affecting each and every one of us, where we're not able to meet in person, um, we're not able to meet as community, um, there's a lot of grief in our hearts. We're turning to prayer uh, because of this grieving, and I thought that uh, offering some prayer on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday um, would be especially meaningful for some of us. And so please join us, not only for these services, but later in the week, for the Monday service that we Monday Thursday service that we will post, uh, it will take the place of the service that we normally would have had in the evening, and on Friday we'll have two posts of services, uh, two different services I should say being posted. One uh, will take the place of our noontime service in which we do a bidding prayer and reading of the Passion of Jesus according to John. And then in the afternoon, we normally at three o'clock would have the way of the cross service, which is a, a journey and a pilgrimage through the stations of the cross using song and prayer and reading of the story. And so um, I invite you to join us for any and all of those. I hope that you find them meaningful as we prepare our hearts for the true joy of resurrection uh, that will take place next Sunday. The um, resource that I'm using for these particular services is called Common Prayer, a Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals. That's a pretty cool name, I think. It's a book that you can purchase online, and it has, for every day of the year, uh, subscribed prayers and scriptures and even some suggested music. And so uh, I will not be leading you in singing today. I won't put you through that, uh, but I will let you know what the suggested songs are. And so let's let us begin. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. The suggested song is, We Are Marching in the Light of God. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light, we see light. A reading from Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. Psalm 36, 5 through 10. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see light. We'll read now from Isaiah the 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I am uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, 
who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Gospel of Mark, the 14th chapter, verses 3 through 9. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he sat at the table, and a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some who were there said in anger to one another, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, whenever the good news is proclaimed in the world, what she has been done what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This particular story is told in all of the uh, Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each tell it, each a little bit differently. In some versions, the woman is named Mary. In others, uh, she is not. In some, she pours the ointment on Jesus' head. In others, she pours it on his feet and even wipes them with her hair. And so we get from this, uh, from this story uh, and from these versions of the story a really broad understanding of what this woman does. And we remember, first of all, that Jesus is on his way to the cross as this unfolds. And we remember the anointing that is done for those who are rulers and kings. Uh, it is a precious and um, sacred anointing. And uh, this is not the kind of anointing that Jesus re receives, but certainly we remember that Jesus as king uh, is chosen by God and blessed by God and is uh, ruler and king over our lives and our hearts. In um, reflection of this particular lesson, contemporary Ugandan uh, theologian Emmanuel Katangole has written, Mary represents the rebel consciousness that is essential to Jesus' gospel. Wherever the gospel is preached, we must remember that it's good news will make you crazy. Jesus will put you at odds with the economic and political systems of our world. This gospel will force you to act, interrupting the world as it is in ways that make even pious people indignant. And so I just take a few moments to reflect on this particular um, writing Think about how it is that the gospel, wherever it is preached, will make you crazy. What about the good news of Jesus Christ will make you crazy? How is it that Jesus will put you at odds with economic and political systems of the world? How does this gospel force you to act, call you to interrupt the world as it is?
We'll now move into a prayer, a, a time of prayers for um, those who we know to be in need. And I will um, lead us with several petitions. At the end of the petition, um, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you might respond, hear our prayer. So let us take a few moments of prayer. Lord, we pray for the healing of those who are afflicted with COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the doctors, the nurses, the technicians, and all who are, are, are now risking their lives and um, exhausting themselves, serving and healing those who are afflicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for all who mourn, for those who have lost loved ones to this affliction and any other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the leaders of our states, of our government, of the world, that they may uh, react with wisdom, that they may take counsel, and that they may lead us in ways that are life-giving and comforting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we, you, we ask that you would be with us. We ask for wisdom. We ask for your mercy. We ask that you would give us the strength and the confidence to follow the directives that we're given, to uh, stay safe in our homes, to take on safe practices when we need to be out. And we ask for the eradication of this disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for those who are in particular risk because of the effects of this disease and the effects on their, um, on their employment. We pray for those who have been furloughed, those who have been left off, laid off, those whose businesses have closed. We pray for those who will struggle to make their next rent payment to put food on the table. We ask, Lord, that assistance might be swift and timely. We ask that you would guard us and guide us in helping those who have less than we ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you would guide us through this holy week. We ask that you would guide your church as it continues to lead its, your, your people and as we struggle to um, reach out in ways that are both meaningful and timely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear now the prayers that we offer to you. And to now, Lord, we commend these and all of our concerns and prayers to you, knowing and trusting that you hear and answer our prayer. Amen. Let us pray now in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. While we sat in darkness, Lord Jesus Christ, you interrupted us with your life. Make us your people, a holy interruption so that by your Spirit's power, we may live as light to the nations, even as we stumble through the world's dark night. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing 
once again into our doors. Amen.